we've kept the LED in there. I just want to show you that uh, we can still keep that part of the circuit working. So we've added an extra part to the circuit now. So what we've got is a speaker and it's basically another voltage divider. Pin 9 is the output pin. We're going to pulse the output pin high and low, just like we did with the LED number 13. So both 13 and 9 will get the same pulse, the same repetition. So we've got another voltage divider. What I've put now, though, is I've put a, a variable a preset resistor. That way we can turn the volume up, up and down because we can either drop more of the energy across here or more of the energy across there. If we drop more of the energy across the speaker, then we'll get more power and so the volume will be higher. So that's what that will do. So it's the same thing here now. We're using a voltage divider now on the output so that we can control the volume of the speaker. Now, and also of course the resistor then, uh, it stops too much uh, current running through the speaker, which could damage the speaker. So I've used a 10K preset here, but I mean you could use a 1K, it wouldn't really matter. You know, I used an 8 ohm speaker and the output voltage is only 5 volts, so it's probably not going to damage the speaker anyway. Just use a cheap speaker. So that's basically what I've done. So when the circuit runs, exactly the same circuit's going to run. Nothing's changed here with the LDR. But now when I place my finger over the LDR, what's going to happen is, again, I'm going to increase the rate, the LED, and now the speaker gets pulsed. This time, we've got to use a very fast repetition because it's no good pulsing it what I was pulsing it on before, which was enough to see the LED going on and off. This time, we're going to pulse it so fast that the LED will look like it's permanently on and that's because your eyes can't perceive anything over about 10 or 20 repetitions per second it just looks like it's continually on so you, that's obvious if you flash the light fast enough you're just going to see it is on permanently so I just wanted to leave that in there to show you that if we can get up to repetitions of 50 Hertz we'll hear that I've made it swap between 50 Hertz and 500 Hertz so you're going to get two tones you're going to get a low tone and a high pitch tone so when you hear the 500 hertz, that means it's 500 hertz is 500 cycles a second. So it's going to switch on and off 500 times a second. And you'll hear that as a high-pitched noise. The energy is running across that speaker. And every time there's a voltage across the speaker, it uh, runs the current in a magnet in the speaker. The magnet, through induction, is connected to a membrane. And the membrane will vibrate at exactly the same frequency. And that's why you hear it, because it moves the air about, and then that reaches your ear, and that's why you hear it. So that's what's happening here. We run a current through this, through the magnet coil of the speaker, and uh, if we keep switching it on and off, then the magnet coil will uh, produce an induction, a magnetic induction, which will make the membrane switch on and off exactly the same frequency. So if it's 500 cycles a second, we're going to hear 500 hertz. If it's 50 cycles a second, we're going to hear it as 50 hertz. So we're going to get two tones. So let me just switch it on and show you that, and then afterwards I'll show you the very simple adaption to the code to do this. So let's put that on now so we can hear what the 50 hertz will sound like. Now I can change the volume on this with this preset. So the preset here, I can change the volume. So I've turned it right down now. So I've turned it right up there so you can hear it, but maybe that's better. So you can hear that. Now if I place my finger over the LDR, you'll get the other tone. Now that's 500 hertz. 50 hertz, 500 hertz. So there you go, you control, you can control a, a tone. And the code to do this is really simple, and I'll show you that now. So all we've done really is we've taken that Blink program and added in some more little sections of code uh, so I just talk you through it now LED pin that's the same we're going to use that LED and uh, as you saw in the video you can't see that uh, flashing on and off anymore because the repetitions are so quick then your eye can't perceive that flashing on and off your eye perceives it as a continuous light second variable which is the new one is the sensor pin now sensor pin we set that equal to zero when we call this function down here called analog read we don't have to specify that sensor pin is an input because all the analog inputs are by default input pins so we don't have to actually put in our setup here 
that sensor pin is a is an input so the only thing now there's a couple of variables we put here min duration equals one and max duration equals ten min duration is is set to one and that's going to relate to one millisecond if you think of that as a cycle going from one to two so you've got two milliseconds well if you invert that that's 500 cycles a second when we've got this small time delay of one millisecond so if we set that 10 times bigger then uh, we're going to get 50 hertz now of course you can hear 500 hertz and you can hear 50 hertz this gives us our two tones that's what we heard through the speaker was those two tones so how do we do that so first thing we do again when the program starts it goes through this setup routine and that basically just sets the output pins so we've got LED we've kept that in there as an output pin and we've got this other output pin called out output pin now output pin we've set that to 9 up here you can say you can see const in output pin equals 9 so this is the pin we're going to use to send a high and a low voltage but this time as it's going to be sent to the speaker so not only is LED pin getting this high and low output voltage but now also output pin 9 is getting the same high and low voltage so we set those two outputs this loop will activate all the time it will go right through the loop and start at the loop again so void loop means just do this sequence of instructions over and over again that's what that means so inside void loop we've got int sensor reading now sensor reading will be a value that is picked up from that sensor pin and that sensor pin as we saw before is pin 0 and the pin 0 in this case is again the voltage between the uh, LDR and the resistor that hasn't changed this time we're going to set the rate differently that we've got this routine called map now it so happens that analog read has a range it'll range from 200 to 800 so that means you've got 600 little divisions that represent the voltage values so what you need to do is to, to give that a range that makes sense you can bracket that range so when you see 200 we have min generation that's going to map the 1 to the 200 and it's going to map the 10 to the 800 so that's what that's doing just mapping those two numbers so we get that 600 little bits between 1 and 10 that's what that's doing there and then this one here will actually constrain now sometimes you can go outside the actual range because of division problems but this makes all this does is really just make sure that it doesn't go outside that range so it makes sure it doesn't go above 10 or below 1 that's all that constraint function does now here we've got output pin high uh, digital right LED pin high so we're setting both the pin 9 and the pin 13 high the pin 9 going to the speaker and the pin 13 going to the LED again but we can ignore the LED really because that's not what we're looking at here now the rate this time is like I say it's uh, one it can be one millisecond and the max duration will be 10 milliseconds it's just going to jump between the two because the voltage is going to be much higher the on voltage and then the low voltage is going to give you the lower frequency it's going to give you the one megaseconds so that means when I put my finger over the LDR again you're going to get the high pitched uh, 500 Hertz uh, per second and when I take my hand away you're going to get the slower pitch of uh, 50 cycles a second so we're using the, the the value we get from sensor pin 9 we're mapping it between the two range min duration and max duration which we set here that gives us how many seconds and then uh, we basically uh, switch it on and off according to that rate so it's exactly the same as the LED but this time we're sending it to a speaker and we're getting two tones 50 Hertz and 500 Hertz so that's it really that's that's how simple that is so on the next video we're going to look at something a little bit different again to all of this